Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, first video, and only video actually. I'm going to have a look at whether it's 10 to 14 days uh, for today's only video. Day 10 will take us to the 14th of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. Instead of GFS and ECM ensembles may run to around a couple of weeks. So we'll also have a look at the CFS V2 uh, for the next four weeks and for April as well. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just want to say thank you so much uh, for all your messages of concern uh, about uh, my uh, little procedure that I had on the mouth uh, on Wednesday afternoon. I think it went way in here, but I'm talking fine. So I seen a lot of pain yesterday. Uh, I had a little biopsy um, on an ulcer that I've got uh, in the mouth. Um, and it was quite painful uh, yesterday. But uh, overnight, things have got a lot better. So you hear that I'm talking okay. I'm virtually pain-free. Just a little bit of discomfort uh, when I'm eating and whatnot. But um, it's absolutely fine. And of course, now I've just got to wait for the results. And uh, when I know, I shall let everybody know what the upshot is so uh, but thank you so much you know you're so kind all of the time so just big big thank you and uh yeah hopefully from uh, now on we'll be back doing two videos a day you know 6 a.m upload and 10 to 14 day that's the plan anyway uh, right, okay, let's turn off webcam, uh, Ben, and we'll uh, start off what's going on in the stratosphere. So we have got a warming of the stratosphere taking place over the Arctic and the North Pole. This is from the uh, JMA, so the grey line is a trend line. The black line shows how temperatures have uh, performed through this season, starting off in September uh, and up to present. And you can see that black line has lifted up. It's not a sudden stratospheric warming, but it is a warming of the stratosphere that has taken place. Uh, in past few days, we are uh, now seeing the temperature up to minus 40 at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. That is above average for the beginning of March. We should be down here at around minus uh, 53 or so. Uh, so warming of stratosphere taking place at 10 HPA. What's happening at 30 HPA? HPA low down towards the troposphere. Let's have a look. Warming is going on there as well. I've had a very, very cold stratospheric temperature at 30 HPA throughout this season, mostly under minus 80 since the beginning of December. Um, but look at this. The black line is also lifting up there as well. We are still a little bit colder than average even now, um, but we are getting back closer now to, to trend. And so... Yeah, I think we're going to see this uh, warming continuing of the stratosphere, both 10 and 30 HPA, and this should produce a weakening of the PV of the polar vortex. Um, latest GFS uh, forecast for temperatures 10 HPA are looking like this. So the blue colours of the cold temperatures at 10 HPA. You can see they're getting pushed out towards northern Europe and, and Russia by these green and yellow, because that's the temperature starting to lift up or lifting up at 10 HPA warming of stratosphere going on. Um, now, as we run through over the next few days, that's generally sustained, uh, really. Um, you know, it's not going to get anywhere near as cold as it has been. So the blue colours tried to come back, cold temperature tried to come back, but this is a big, big blow for, for um, like, the polar vortex and, and, and uh, the cold temperatures at 10 HPA. As we run through into more acceleration, another warming taking place here. In fact, hinting at a bit of a sudden stratospheric warming over Siberia again, just displacing the blue colours of cold temperature at 10 HPA. The PV, essentially, its roots in the stratosphere again displaced over towards uh, northern and, and western parts of Europe by these warmer colours. So this is a big old uh, blow for the PV for polar vortex and for those temperatures, uh, you know, at 10 HPA, and will produce, like, a significant weakening of, of the zona wind. Uh, so this is uh, from the University of Berlin. This is indicating uh, the strength of zona winds at both 10 and also 30 HPA in the stratosphere. That's where we are, or where it was a few days ago. This is where we are right now, already weakening the zona wind off, and the, we the zona winds are going to weaken even, even further over the uh, next uh, few days. But we're trying to bounce back a little bit as we move up towards day 10, but not getting back to the kind of level we have been at through most of this season where we have had quite a strong zone winds. We don't get a reversal of zone winds, you'll notice. If we've got a reversal of zone winds, then we would go down here. So we don't get that, but we do get a significant weakening of zone winds. That's caused both by the warming, although it's not a sudden traffic warming, is enough of a warming to weaken the zone wind. And also uh, the displacement, you know, uh, of the polar vortex at its roots. Um, so, so dramatic developments, and I think we are seeing the end of this season's uh, polar vortex. I think from here on in, we will uh, see this winding down. 
Uh, right, sensing temperature is looking like this. So CT is currently standing at 6.6. .6. That's 2 degrees uh, above average. That's provisional to just the 3rd of, uh, of uh, March. Now, of course, um, we confirm that uh, the February CT came out at 6.8, which is 3 degrees above average. I don't think we've done that with this chart since uh, since I took my break on Wednesday. So um, that confirms it, 6.8, 3 degrees above average for February CT. We're currently at 6.6 .6 for March, which is 2 degrees uh, above average. That's probably going to hold at that sort of level, and then may start to lower uh, as we go into next week, because we could see some, uh, see some cold weather actually coming up uh, next week. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off a little bit above average at the moment, but we're going to go below average into the weekend and through to early next week. We're just generally staying a little bit below average uh, right up to the middle of March. So this is quite a significant change on what we've had through most of January and February, where we was uh, above average, really since Christmas a New Year, we've been generally uh, trending above average with the upper air temperatures. Now we do see a bit of a change on that. It's not dramatically cold, but certainly it does look quite cool, I think, next week. And we might start to pull in some, you know, appreciably cold air off the continent. I've got a few on some of the members here for next week, but again, really quite cold, down to minus 10 at 850 HP. I think we're a little bit overdone. But nevertheless, I think next week could be quite cool, actually, quite chilly. Uh, maybe even cold. Uh, Precipitation-wise, got some rainfall to come over the next couple of days. Then it goes drier through much of next week as it turns colder. And then possibly turning more unsettled again around the middle part of March. Let's see how the two metre temperatures are looking. So they're looking pretty low, really. Uh, so that's 8 degrees just there. And you can see that but certainly over next week they're looking pretty low. There might be a recovery in the temperature being hinted at as we go into the middle of March. You might start to see temperature beginning to lift up a little bit then. And in terms of snow, I mean, there are some snow spikes in there. Uh, remember, this is for London, so it's the far southeast as well. I mean, there are some snow spikes in there. Not many of them, but there might be a few flakes coming and going on those uh, chilly southeasterly winds next week. Temperature anomalies uh, from the 4th to the 12th March are looking colder than average. The UK and Ireland through most parts of Europe as well. Just really Sweden and the far northeast looking a little bit milder than most areas actually coming up with a cold now. Actually, again, big flip on what we had through most of winter. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to the 12th of March look like that. Um, largely drier than uh, normal for the north and west, nearer normal for southern and eastern areas. And the latest wind flow map from urbanoldschool.net looks like this. We have got an area of low pressure in the Atlantic Ocean. However, high pressure is becoming a little bit more influential uh, just at the moment. Okay, so let's start going through the chart data then. This is how the UK Met Euro run is looking for midnight on Monday. High pressure is in over top of the country then. Mainly dry, but probably quite frosty. I would have thought, and as we go through next week, that high pressure tries to get up towards Scandinavia. Certainly pulls the wind in from a south direction, which you'll look at and probably think is mild, but I think that'll be bringing in pretty cold air from off the continent. So these south winds will actually pull in some what, quite cold air, I think, off the continent, and we could see an increasing risk of frost, maybe quite significant frost, through uh, next week. By Friday, midnight on Friday, lower pressure developing in the Atlantic. It's just getting a little bit closer, moving into that area of high pressure. It's starting to shift the wind from like a south east to more of a southwesterly. So that begins to drag something a little bit milder in from off the Atlantic, particularly to the north and the west. No direct easterly with the UK, Matt, you'll notice. This is ICOM. High pressure again is in over the country on Monday and then moves up towards Scandinavia. Starts to pull in these quite chilly southeasterly winds. And then look what happens through the second half of next week. The high pressure strengthens over Scandinavia. Low pressure to the west of Ireland combines and pulls in like a proper easter, easterly, southeasterly to easterly wind. And that just brings in some really quite cold air. There's my 10 hours iceberg coming in from the east. That will start to deliver snow showers into eastern areas. And that carries on up to the end of the Icon Run, which gets us to midday on Friday next week. Again, pulling in wind from an east southeasterly direction. That could well bring in some snow from the east, especially as these areas of low pressure come up against that area of high pressure. Upper air temperatures look pretty cold. So, uh, Icon, you remember, Icon never went for cold weather over Christmas, but Icon going for really quite cold weather next week. Not just from like a continental southeasterly, but from a proper. 
sort of easily flow and cold upper air temperatures. Let's have a GFS midnight run. Looks again, high pressure in over country on Monday and then shifts to the east on Tuesday. Pulls in the southeast winds. They'll be quite cold and bring significant uh, overnight frost anyway. Second half of next week sees low pressure coming up against that area of high pressure. Begins to pull up more of a southerly. That's probably quite a cold southerly still, though. Um, it's not until we get to around day 10 that we start to turn wind more to the southwest and become milder. Uh, many more at range, high pressure sort of takes over from the east. That's quite a mild ridge. Um, so that will bring, you know, prob probably quite spring-like weather by the time you get through into the middle part of uh, March. It's have a six then. It's looking again very similar for Monday with high pressure over top of the country. And the high pressure goes to Scandinavia through the early to middle part of next week. Pulls the wind in from a southeasterly direction. That carries on to the second half next week. Low pressure to our west, high pressure to the east. Winds coming up from a southerly direction. But it's a cold southerly. Upper air temperatures aren't that cold. But the dew points do look cold through the second half of next week. They're below freezing. So significant overnight frost. Proper old freeze up going on over the continent. That's where the wind's coming from. Wind sort of turns more southeasterly by the, the following weekend. This is Saturday 12th of March. Proper southeast winds. Again, dew points are looking very cold, particularly more eastern areas. And upper air temperatures are becoming colder through the weekend of the 12th, 13th March as well. So, GFS 6 it actually turns really quite cold as we run up towards day 10 with east south easterly winds and, uh, you know, really cold air being drawn up from off the continent. In more extreme range, again, same idea as the midnight run. We start to bring in more of an Atlantic flow. What's don't want to go there? There starts to bring in more of an Atlantic flow and begins to get milder around the middle part of March. This second week of March could turn out to be quite cold, you know. It's how the GM is looking again. High pressure over country on Tuesday. And then in Tuesday, uh, a little bit more influence from the Atlantic for the second half of next week. So the GM is milder compared to the other models. Not as much of a, a continental influence. It's just milder and more unsettled with the uh, GM. And then ECM looking like this. If you enjoyed the video, by the way, please hit the like button. To make sure you sub to the channel, thank you so much for both doing that and drop a comment. Let us know what about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, ECM again pulling in those pretty cold sort of winds off the continent through the middle part of uh, next week. I don't know, temperatures aren't that cold, but I think. The surface temperature is cold, but dew points would be cold. Um, end of next week, low pressure coming up against that ridge. There's a possibility of some snow with this, but it just depends how cold the upper air temperatures get. There won't be any snow with that because the upper air temperatures are far too mild. And notice it's very cold over the continent, but if we get wind into that southeasterly direction uh, more, or east-southeast, uh, as like Icon of GFS 6 said does, then next week will be cold. So there is a bit of uncertainty about how cold it gets next week, but I certainly think the early and middle part of next week will be quite cold from frost, if nothing else. You finish up with the ECM looking like that, again, pulling in the wind from like a southeasterly uh, direction. Not particularly cold with the upper air temperature, but I think the dew points and you know, surface temperatures will still be quite cold. So... How cold it's going to get next week remains to be seen, but I think we will get very least some overnight frost. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Of course, much of the time, high pressure will be in control. So there's not going to be much precipitation going on until we get, uh, you know, towards the last stage of next week. And then start bringing some rain, maybe a little bit of stink snow in from off the Atlantic. A bit of a snow event there for the north around the 12th of March. Um, so, yeah, you know, it could turn quite wintry. It, it, it remains to be seen how wintry it gets really next week but i certainly think we're going to pull in a south bc for a while anyway and have some quite significant overnight frost these are the options on the table in the ecm ensemble day four day 10 gets us to the 14th of march 19 members of the ecm ensembles including the control run have low pressure to our west high pressure to the east oops let's just answer the phone Okay, let's resume. <laughs> and we're going to see uh, the ops on the table in the East Ensemble Day 4. Day 10 gets to the 14th of March. 19 members of the East Ensemble with high pressure to our east, low pressure to the west. And we bring up the wind from like a southerly, southeasterly direction. So it could be quite cold with that. 18, including the operational run, have a stronger reach to the northeast and may pull up winds from a proper sort of easterly, southeast direction. That's a little bit colder. Uh, eight, with northern blocking. High pressure between Iceland and Scandinavia. Low pressure to our south. And that will get wind into a proper easterly direction. And could bring wintry weather, uh, actually, in from the south, from the southwest. And then six, with low pressure 
just to our west, and that's going to be milder and more unsettled. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It will get us to the 19th of March, 25 members of East Shell ensembles have high pressure over Scandinavia, bringing in a wind from an easterly direction, cold and frosty. With that, probably 15 with low pressure to the north, high pressure over France, winds in from a southwesterly direction, and then 11 with low pressure dominating, and that's going to be the most unsettled option, of course. I think we don't look any further than next week and um, the following weekend though, the 12th 13th of march when we might get some quite wintry weather cfsb2 looks like this these are 500 millibar heights break down to meet peers the first week period takes us from the 4th to the 10th of march the coming week has high pressure to our east northeast and could bring in some quite cold air from off the continent big changes on what we've had through most of the winter week 2 11th to the 17th of march brings the atlantic back and turns milder wetter and windier week 3 is going to be the 18th to 24th of march with low pressure again to the north and bringing in the wind off the atlantic that's milder wetter wind and rather westerly and then week four is going to be the 25th to 31st of march with high pressure over france spain low pressure over greenland and iceland and winds coming in from off the atlantic uh so that could be quite mild as well so eventually spring arrives but it is a little bit delayed for week one finally miss out april is looking with a cfsv2 at the moment with 700 mm bar height only for april with high pressure to the south low pressure to the north looks like it's a relatively mild um spring like april uh really ongoing scenario of what i've had throughout the weather pattern since August. <laughs> it goes on into April as well. CFS is right. Um, mild and average above average temperatures and precipitation-wise, no signal below the spectrum of other dry month would be likely. We'll worry about April a little bit closer to the time frame, I think. Right, we're done then. So if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much for your amount. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Webers. Get them to subscribe. And thank you so much. We're grinding to 14K subscribers. Um, so uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, see you in that. Right, okay, so we're done. Uh, we're back tomorrow with 6 a.m. upload and a 10 to 14 day as well. So, uh, yeah, the things will begin to move again on the channel after being on Batman for a couple of days. Um, and uh, more coming up tomorrow. You yeah, enjoy the rest of your Friday, uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.